If you don't live in a cave, you've noticed how badly optimized modern games are. Every year, the power of graphics card and their prices increase. The budgets of games and the time to create them are also growing. The only thing that doesn't grow is FPS. It is falling. In recent years, we've seen a bunch of failed releases where poor optimization destroyed potentially good projects. It has become the norm not to play a new game as soon as it is released, but to wait months and sometimes years until developers can optimize it properly. Although new games look amazing, game studios forget about a very important element of a good gaming experience. The problem with poor optimization is that developers are actually alienating almost 90% of their player base. According to a January 2025 Steam survey, only about 10% of Steam users have hardware that can run these games on the recommended settings. The logical answer is to just buy a new PC. But it's not that simple. New graphics card from Nvidia costs thousands of dollars, although there is no significant increase in power over the previous generation. The most expensive GPUs don't even break the 60 frames per second mark, without DLSS, which still works like crap. Although, we used to have enough 2 gigabytes of video memory to play really awesome games in terms of graphics. But what killed the optimization? That's a good question, huh? Why don't developers care about making the games run well and look good at the same time? That's a good is it all about a secret conspiracy with NVIDIA and AMD to simply increase sales of their hardware? Well, it's not really that simple. As with many other issues, it's not so black and white, and there are many reasons for the low optimization in most recent releases. The first of them is the upscaling technology. Over the past few years, artificial intelligence has been developing at an alarming rate. A couple of years ago, we were shocked that ChatGPT wrote us a poem, and now it creates entire codes and replaces most programmers. AI is used everywhere. We have videos, pictures, songs, and of course, graphics created by AI. The scaling technology in video games works like this. The game is launched at a low resolution, for example 1080p, and then AI, such as DLSS or FSR, scales it to a higher resolution, for example 4K. Theoretically, this will allow your game to look like it would in a normal resolution but this is not quite true. Even at high resolutions, some problems become quite obvious. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can see flickering. You can also see it in Cyberpunk. Also, artifacts are especially visible in fast-paced scenes. The AI has to guess how the game will look like in a higher resolution. And as a result, with upscaling enabled, the game will never look the way developers intended. For me personally, it's quite important that the game has the right artistic direction, and I can't help but feel that DLSS and FSR are quick and easy solutions to increase the frame rate that simply distort the original concept. You might be saying right now, now I can play GTA 6 on my shitty RTX 3060! And my answer to that is, short term solutions cause long term problems. Sure, upscaling technology allows gamers to avoid wasting their parents savings on a new GPU, but this technology also encourages developers not to optimize their games. Because they think, hey, these cocksuckers are going to turn on DLSS anyway, so the game will run well. But the problem with this technology are not only on PCs. The PlayStation 5 Pro, which is now the most powerful console on the market and costs over $1,000 also has its own AI upscaling known as PSSR or PlayStation Super Resolution. I remember back in 2020 when the PlayStation 5 was introduced, they were preaching that it was a huge step for gaming because developers no longer had so many graphical limitations on how they wanted their games to look. However, it soon became clear that the current generation of consoles could not run games in 4K and at least 60 FPS. After 4 years, the PS5 Pro came to the rescue, where Sony swore that finally, gamers would not have to choose between performance and quality, but they failed. Again. Now, console game developers are forced to adapt new releases to new compromised solutions like PSSR, a technology that only masks hardware limitations, not solves them. In fact, PSSR is a license for developers to be lazy. Why spend time fine-tuning performance if you can just throw the game on the market, add scaling, and claim its optimization? In reality, what we have is a new console that they sell for twice as much as the regular version, but it can't run new games in 4K and 60fps. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, which is an incredibly good game, by the way, also works in the upscale, thanks to PSSR, just like any other console. Only the Xbox Series S doesn't fuck with us and runs in native resolution. 
we are witnessing the console market degrading. We have moved from real technical breakthroughs to marketing promises that only mask real problems. But upscaling technology, which spoils the picture and allows developers to do nothing and rest more, is not the only thing that has killed optimization. Ray tracing. These two words have become mandatory in every presentation of new gaming technologies since 2018. And although marketers try to convince us that it is almost the holy grail of gaming, the reality is a bit different. Let's take a look at what it is. Ray tracing is a method of light processing that tries to mimic its behavior in the real world. In fact, this is something that Pixar has been using in animated films since 1999. But now that this technology has burst into games, the main question arises. Is it really needed, or is it just a marketing illusion? Here is an example, Cyberpunk 2077. If you turn on ray tracing to the maximum, yes, the lighting looks fantastic, but it will cost you such frame drops that you will have the impression that you are watching a video that was shot in 1878, or like you're playing on a Nintendo Switch. What do we get in return? Puddles with better reflections? Okay, but will the average player notice? Most likely not unless you point it out to them. Look, the glare is now displayed differently here. And now you have 15 FPS so you can see it in more detail, loser. And the worst part is that some games don't allow you to turn off ray tracing at all. Star Wars Outlaws, for example, only offers a choice between minimum and maximum ray tracing. Why can't I just turn it off? Why am I forced to use DLSS or FSR upscaling just to compensate for the fact that the developers failed to properly optimize the game? But the main problem isn't even that ray tracing eats up performance. But it has become an excuse for lazy developers. Once upon a time, they created their own unique lighting methods and adjusted reflections manually. Half-Life 2, for example, had great plane reflexes that looked quite impressive in 2004. And now? We just turn on ray tracing and forget about it. Another example is Alan Wake 2, one of the most beautiful games of recent years, which makes extensive use of ray tracing. It looks amazing, if you have top of the line hardware. But even with the RTX 4090, it can produce a miserable 30 to 40 frames per second in 4K if you turn off DLSS. And if you have a mid-range card, don't even dream of smooth gameplay without upscaling. But when we talk about the laziness of modern video game developers, of course, we have to mention the damn Unreal Engine 5. The engine that promised to change the gaming industry. When Epic Games first demonstrated it in 2020, everyone was excited. Dynamic lighting, billions of polygons, the revolutionary nanite geometry system, realistic lumen lighting, everything looked like a real leap into the future. We were promised that games would look better than ever, and it would be easier for developers to create detailed worlds. But here's the reality in 2025. Most games running on Unreal Engine 5 are terrible. We have unstable FPS, graphical glitches, blurring, artifacts, and simply unoptimized performance. So what went wrong? Imagine being given the perfect 3D printer that can print anything you want, with no limits. But then you find out that it's powered by a nuclear reactor that consumes more energy than an entire city but still less than a new RTX 5090. Unreal Engine really allows you to create incredible detail. Its Nanai system allows game worlds to contain tens of billions of polygons, and Lumen automatically provides photorealistic lighting. This is all great if you're making a CGI movie, but when it comes to video games, it creates serious performance issues. Previously, developers were forced to optimize their games, manually adjusting the geometry of models, coming up with interesting lighting methods, optimizing shadows and effects. It took a lot of time, but but it allowed games to run stably. Now studios simply rely on Nanite and Lumen to automatically generate ultra detailed graphics. But the truth is that even the most powerful graphics cards can barely cope with this automatic detail. The remake of Silent Hill 2, Stalker 2, Remnant 2, and a bunch of other projects from recent years, all these games are made on UE5 and suffer from the same problem, poor performance and strange artifacts. To hide all these shortcomings, the developers brazenly force you to play with TAA, Temporal Anti-Aliasing Enabled, which turns a clear picture into a soapbox. Why optimize if you can just throw in ray tracing and say, Well, yes, you need an RTX 4090 for good graphics, and if you don't have one, that's your problem. However, most gamers don't want to sell their left leg to buy a new RTX 50 for a few thousand dollars. We are poor people after all, and I want all the new releases to run smoothly on my GTX 650. But what do I get in return? 
unoptimized crap where 30 FPS is still good, and when you try to raise the frame rate, the game starts to look like any AAA game on Nintendo Switch. Video game development used to be an art of optimization. The game had to run smoothly, stable, and quickly, regardless of whether it was running on a powerful PC, a weak laptop, or consoles. Every byte of memory was worth its weight in gold. Every polygon and every texture was carefully balanced between quality and performance. Take Dark Souls, for example. The game ran on From Software's propriety engine and, despite all its shortcomings, had stable performance even on weak hardware. The Last of Us is a technical masterpiece for its time. Naughty Dog squeezed the most out of the PlayStation 3, creating a game that looked better than most PC projects. Another optimization genius is Hideo Kojima, who showed a perfect example of a smart approach to performance in Metal Gear Solid 5. Fox Engine, which could produce incredible detail, but at the same time works smoothly on all devices, including the PS3. What's more, the adaptive display technology adjusted the graphics in real time so that the game always ran smoothly. But it's a new world, and in the new world, doing stuff well doesn't pay money. Making stuff fast, selling it fast, and making the next stuff is what pays money. Nowadays, games are released before they are properly debugged. And now, add to that the rising prices of hardware, scalpers, and the general greed of corporations that want to sell more and more. PC gaming has long ceased to be affordable. Now, it is simply a luxury. First and foremost, developers should think about a wide audience of gamers, not about what interested gaming journalists who can run the game on maximum settings will say about it. 